Welcome to Golden Mastermind Seminars Radio with your host, Jeffrey Combs. Jeffrey Combs, Tuesday afternoon, Facebook Live, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated Facebook Live. Originally, the more heart than talent mindset call going back to the late 90s, starting at 10.30 Eastern Standard Time. I recorded thousands and thousands of these calls over the years, so welcome everyone to Facebook Live 4 o'clock version, 2 for Tuesday. Scott Lucas, welcome to Tuesday afternoon, Facebook Live. Welcome. It's good to see you, Scott, and honored to be on the Clubhouse Live with you on Sunday evenings. Welcome, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Combs, President and Founder. Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. Heather, I see you there. Good to see you this afternoon. Welcome. If you're just coming on here, give me a wave. Henry, good to see you this afternoon. In beautiful Cody, Wyoming, Henry. Henry, have you been to Sheridan yet? Good afternoon, Heather. Everyone say hello to Heather. She has just joined us. Welcome. We will move into the inspirational portion of today's Facebook Live in a few moments as people come on. Matt Smith, how are you this afternoon. Welcome. If you're traveling the country and want to say hello, let us know where you are. Corey Van Winkle, good afternoon. Welcome, Corey. So joining live from Cody, Wyoming, have not been to Sheridan yet. That would be that way from you. There is a famous restaurant bar there you definitely want to go to called Mint, the Mint Bar downtown. Welcome, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Combs. I am the president and founder of Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. We have people from Massachusetts, We have people from West Virginia, South Carolina, Cody, Wyoming. If you've never been to Cody, Wyoming, that is the home of the Buffalo Bill Historical Museum. It has one of the largest firearm collections in the world and is a beautiful small town that I considered moving to or having a second home to. And Henry Klauke is on today's Facebook Live. Henry moved from Chicago to Cody, so that would be it's very close to Yellowstone. We have many people. Malcolm Stewart, how are you this evening? From beautiful San Diego. Welcome, everyone. Let's move into the inspirational portion of today's Facebook Live. Topic for today's Facebook Live is connection on command, meaning meaning that wherever you are, you're able to be in a conversation so you choose to. You also can choose not to be in conversation and be disconnected on command and if the opportunity avails itself with, with communication skills, you're able to communicate effectively, easily, and effortlessly. And the byproduct of that, if you are skilled at that, you can create rapport on command, insert rapport, so that in rapport building skills, there is fact finding, small talk, and rapport building skills, meaning able to find common points of interest. For key points in me, I've sat on airplanes for 21 years. I flew over 150,000 air miles, some international, most of the United States, about 99% in the United States, but I have flown to England. I've spoken in England, Australia twice, the Philippines. I spoke in no, Taipei, that would be Taiwan. I spoke in Panama, Panama on two occasions, Mexico numerous times. And so on many occasions, I'm sitting next to someone sitting there and sitting there, someone in front of me and behind me. On one occasion, Nancy Pelosi was sitting in front of me, Prince sat next to me, the band Live, who had the Grammy-winning award uh, CD back in the day called Throwing Copper, Trent Dilfer, who won an NFL Super Bowl at one point, the general manager for the San Francisco 49ers, Clifton Davis, an actor, the former drummer for the band Pablo Cruz. I mean, a long laundry list of people that I've sat and had conversations with on airplanes, and I have had rapport building, fact finding, and communication skills. So if you have this connection on command, you can strike up conversation anywhere. Yes, Lucy, here was the Nancy Pelosi story. I did an event in, New, New, Lucy put exclamation points. So I set on B2, B, B, that's where I always set is B2, and that's the aisle on the side, and Nancy Pelosi was sitting on the seat in front of me, and she had six agents around her. It was flying on a Saturday night, April 6th, 
from Palm Springs, California, back to Sacram or to San Francisco. The plane was held up as a group of limousines pulled up. A woman gets off out of the limousine. Six people usher her onto the plane. I get on the plane and she's setting one seat in front of me. She's on the window seat in a small plane flying from Palm Springs to San Francisco. She is in 1A and I'm in 2B. 2B, that's where I always said is 2B. So that's on the right-hand side of the plane right there. I, fl I sat there for 23 years, national, international. So she set one seat in front of me and I asked myself, I wonder if she'll have a conversation with me. When we get up, the, pl the, the plane ends and she asked me if I'd get her bag down. And I got her bag down, and then she asked me if I was following the NCAA tournament. I said I was, and she let me know she was a Michigan State fan. And that is my Nancy Pelosi six degrees of separation story. That was April 6, 2019. And that was a, I was at an internet marketing conference. I spoke for a couple hundred people that day. So that, that, once again, this always happens to me. I attract to my reality people of influence and affluence. I once had a conversation with a man on a plane. He asked me what I do for a career. We had a conversation. And when we landed from Phoenix Airport, Sky Harbor in San Francisco, I had my credit card machine with me because I spoke that day. He hired me for five hours of coaching. He had me an American Express gold card. And before I got off the plane, I processed his card. He coached with me for one year and came to breakthroughs to success. It was a very interesting experience. It's the only time it's ever happened. I don't typically do that, but the situation availed itself. So the more we understand why we do what we do, the more you understand how people are predictable. Lenny Dykstra, who played in the, with the 1986 New York Mets, and he also played with the Philadelphia Phillies, who incidentally was a steroid user, it was later proved, and was arrested for a major, whatever it was, some kind of financial situation. He owned a, a um, car wash. He bought Wayne Gretzky's house and went upside down. I had a conversation with him once in a massage room at the Arizona Biltmore, and he, he and I had a conversation. It was very interesting. He booked an appointment with me. He asked me to meet him for breakfast, and he didn't show up. So that's my Lenny Dykstra story. But once again, I knew who he was. I struck up a conversation with him and fostered that. So the way, I mean, so those are rapport building remarks or excuse me, aren't you Lenny Dykstra? Lenny, it just so happens I'm a friend of you. I'm a, I'm a fan of yours. Do you happen to know Gary Gaetti? He goes, oh, Gary. Ga so Gary Gaetti was my college room or was my college friend. And Gary Gaetti played 19 years in the major league. So that was crossing the bridge. That means a point of interest. So in point of interest is where you're able to create conversation by points of interest. That would be travel. That would be ge geography dining, traveling, any multitude of situations where you can create that rapport, where you can create rapport with people, where you fact find, rapport build, and small talk with people. So when, you, when you're in a conversation, a business conversation, and you're looking for a vendor, a contractor, a prospect, a teammate, someone to purchase your product, services, benefit, or feature, or you're seeking a coach, or you're seeking someone to assist you with a lead generation program, it's going to be very important that you, you develop skills to ask the questions in a sequence. I produced an 8-CD audio program in 2008 called The Psychology of Asking. Every one of you that I coach, you have that free in your back office, and if you haven't Listen to it for a while. Go back and refresh your memory on the skill of asking questions. Become a master asker. When also in in command co connection on command, there are people who are going to confront us in today's world. They're going to ask us, "Have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done that?" So you don't want to be in a position where you relapse back into fight or flight, where you're a child and you're in and you feel compelled to explain, validate, and justify yourself. You want to stay in command of the situation. That's what the topic of today's call is, connection on command. Breathe, release, and instead of talking or explaining, ask that person a question so that you're not in the force-counter-force relationship so you can stay in your power. And whenever someone, your parents or someone, puts that attack mode on you, why haven't you done this? Why haven't you called? Why are you asking? I mean, ask them a question so you're not trapped explaining, validating, justifying yourself. That way you're able to be non-attached, not feel rejected or abandoned, and easily and effortlessly let go without being overwhelmed. And then when the conversation's over, you're not in this wonderment, I can't believe I did this. 
I can't believe they said this. I can't believe they did this to me. So you want to be able to let go in any conversation. You want to be able to let go of the possibility of being rejected or abandoned. This is the very situation that keeps many people on the sidelines of life because their anxiety about the outcome that hasn't happened, especially in selling. Sales is the highest paid profession in the world. But if you don't buy into the profession or you're not comfortable or good at it, or you don't have good customer service skills, or you don't have sales skills or communication skills or asking skills, it's going to hinder you. And it shows up in dating also. Many people have challenges dating because they're not good at it. They tell themselves, there's not good at it. There's not any good men. There's not any good women. This always happens to me. And so this is the way you, when you communicate like that, it limits and inhibits your ability to create the connection. The objective is to see if there's a connection available. If the person is not connectable, that doesn't mean they're rejecting you. It means that they're not open to conversation. They're shut down themselves. They have, they're distracted with some of the situations. They don't find it engaging. And then you yourself are not skilled at asking the questions. And your objective when you're prospecting, communicating, seeking a teammate, a soulmate, any multitude of situations is to see if there is a connection. When you encounter people who are disconnected, not emotionally available, people who are checked out, checked out, you'll encounter these people. When you encounter these people, you want to learn to easily and effortlessly let go. I had someone reach out to me recently and they let me know they wanted a 20-minute coaching session. I could tell real quickly that that's not really what was meant and there was another motive. I found out what the, I said, excuse me, are you seeking, are you considering hiring a coach? So the, oh, the, the answer was, well, and then she told me a story and I thanked her and got out of the conversation. And once again, this was nine minutes, not 20 when your time is valuable, you learn to qualify people for your time. And by qualifying people for your time, it means that you have a value of your time. So your time should be worth $100 an hour, $200 an hour, $300 an hour, $50 an hour, whatever your time is worth, assess the value of a time and put a price tag on it. Also in communication, have clearly defined boundaries. Be clear on the outcome you seek when you're in conversation. So what many people do is they get overwhelmed and they start talking. They lose control of their emotions and then they end up talking too much. And that's what happens to many people who are not skilled at prospecting, fact-finding, rapport building, small talk, and qualifying people for your time. The better that you become, the better that you are at being able to form the connection, the easier it will be for you to be able to either let people go or move forward in a conversation. When I dine out in a restaurant, Oftentimes, the waiter waitress is an order taker. They walk up, can I get you anything from the bar? Now, the difference between an order taker and myself, who is a professional waiter in four, five, and six-star restaurants, I would do an introduction. My name is Jeff, and I'll be in charge of your culinary experience. I worked in a five-star restaurant where we did everything French service. That means with a large spoon and fork on each hand. You had to be ambidextrous in both hands. We cooked, we finished everything at the table on a Giordano. We did flaming desserts. We did coffee Diablo. We did strawberries flambe, bananas foster, and especially Zabayon. Zabayon is a very, very unique velvety French custard created table side with Marsala wine and occasionally Grand Manier poured over raspberries. And it's a 15 minute production and you have to sit there and like, beat this and so and I, I became very skilled at fostering relationships as a waiter where every single night I would go in and wait tables my station would be filled from what were called call parties request parties I had a business card this is 1980 to 1984 and I built a clientele doing this and says so that's the difference between being a professional and being an amateur amateurs talk professionals qualify and the more you understand the difference in that, that's the difference between an order taker and a closer. A closer knows how to start a conversation as well as let go of a conversation as well as finish a conversation. I had that. I had a referral yesterday, and I did a, a, I did two prospecting calls today. I had one hour free. Oh, Emron! Oh my God, Emron Clark is on today's Facebook Live. Emron, send me a message afterwards. Emron, Emron booked me to speak for him a few times. Emron Clark, and I'm going to use this, is a top-tier sales professional. Emron is a top-tier real estate professional. Emron lives in San Diego, California. I was actually his coach 
in 2008 and 9 and I spoke at some of some of his events in San Diego in the early 2000 like 2013 so Emron just popped on here a graduate of University of California Los Angeles so good to see you today Emron Emron go ahead and post your website here if you can so people who have real estate skills can find you and he is top tier so he under I was his coach for numerous years so good to see all of you on today's Facebook Live. Henry, good to see you this afternoon. I know, Henry, you're learning skills from me. You're learning skills from from Joe DiBianca, who I coached for many years, who's also a top-tier closer. Best coaching I've done is with Jeff. Emron, go ahead and post a link where people can go directly to your website where they can receive a coaching call from you if you offer those. But you definitely want to follow Emron. He, has, he is in the San Diego, Orange County area. If you're looking to live, reside, or move to that area, he would unequivocally be my endorsement. Now, once again, this is these are communication skills. You want to be skilled at endorsing people, edifying people. You want to be skilled at communicating with people, diplomacy with people. If you ever have that neighbor from hell, I've experienced that recently. The last thing you want to do is get in an argument with someone who wants to make you wrong. The people who want to make you wrong, you get out of the conversation. I asked my attorney just some advice on what to say to, to my neighbor. Call my attorney. That's the advice. Call my attorney. Three words. So in communication, you want to be able to have five to 15 words that end with a question mark so that you're not left in a conversation where you're doing the talking. You're also, when you when you become skilled at, at asking questions and communicating, there's open-ended questions and there's closed-end questions. How serious are you about improving the quality of your health? Well, I've been a health fanatic. Now, you didn't, it's, you're going to get a story right here. And so you ask someone how serious they are. When they say, well, that's a tell. They're going to tell you a story. Now, typically, the attention span of the average person is 28 to 45 seconds. So when you have someone on a drunk a log, a ramble fest, they're down the rabbit hole forgetting what the question was. It's going to be your responsibility to say, Scott, Matt, I appreciate your information. My question was, you asked the same question twice. You're also going to learn to ask yes and no questions. Those are closed questions. There's open questions. Open questions are, if money weren't an issue, what would you do with your time? Closed questions are, are you serious about starting a business from your home? Are you serious is a trial closing question, and that is a yes-no question. Anything other than yes and no is a story. Now, you can listen for a few seconds, but what you'll find that many people forget the question you ask them, and they're lost in the sauce of being overwhelmed. And it's going to be your responsibility to ask the question, and you do that by interrupting them by using their first name. For those of you who follow Matt Smith, he, Matt has a, a uh, page. Go ahead and post that, Matt. Mastering the Tides Sobriety Consciousness. Matt is an NLP practitioner. Matt can teach you the term embedded command and also so many other places that you can uh, that he can assist you to improve your communication skills. Your communication skills require you to be exceptional. And you want to be able to, in communication, you want to be able to diplomatically let people know in your clearly defined boundaries that you're not open to certain situations. And you're not, you're not going to stay in a conversation that's going nowhere. You're able to easily and, exitly, easily and effortlessly exit a conversation. I asked my attorney yesterday. I had a, a contracting question. I had a liability question. I wanted to know. Now, my attorney bills me about five fifty an hour. So I, I said, Jason, the clock is on. So I spoke to him, and I asked him content on how my assistant, Dylan, could write a one-page contract to release me from liability of any type of lien for a subcontractor that I that I fired for my contractor. It was a, it was a very complex, challenging situation. And right now today, my assistant has that one-page document signed. And I called the contractor and I said, Fred. And whenever you're addressing someone, the sweetest sound to their ear is their own name. So that's why you want to be able to use their name. Now, I, I coached one of my clients today. And I asked him a question, and his, his, he started the sentence by, um, and I brought him down to earth off the ceiling, and I, and I started the sweetest sound to a person's name. So when, if you have challenges answering questions, use the person's first name that's, that's asking you the question. Take the word that they, so 
what would you like me to cover today? And so I was teaching him to say, Jeff, what I'd like you to cover is. So when he uses my name, he's now anchored in the answer instead of, um, that's what happens to so many good people is they, um, they, um is a sound. It's not even a word, but it's a sound that people use to buy time where they go in the analytical egoic mind. And there was a child, they were being traumatized by a passive aggressive, narcissistic mother, brother, father, sister, any multitude of people who would traumatize us. And then as Matthew, as Matthew Smith would say, that forms the trauma bond. And that trauma bond is then we end up attracting to our reality people in situations that confront us, challenge us, put us in uncomfortable situations so we can feel overwhelmed. And that fulfills the neurochemical craving that keeps us emotionally addicted to the same set of feelings that creates the payoff. Now, when you begin to understand that, you are you and you are letting go. John, John Lundberg, good to see you. For those of you who live in Florida, John Lundberg is open for business. John is a exceptional, I, actually, I received some great, con John, your content was exceptional yesterday. I asked my attorney some of the insight you gave me. John is a top tier home inspector. He's inspected thousands of homes in Illinois. He's becoming licensed in Florida. And he's some, if you live in Florida, call John because he's unequivocally your man for home inspections. I'm going to be teaching John how to do give home inspection insight over the telephone. The insight that I received from John yesterday, John, I went straight to my attorney after our call and or when we when we coach, I went straight to my attorney and I asked him some of the questions and insight you gave me. That that was so right there, Brevard County, Florida in the house. So there you go, Charles. C contact contact uh, John over there. So the, I love to endorse people. Endorsements Fact-finding, rapport-building, small talk, edifying. These are all communication skills that you can learn to create rapport with people. R-A-P-P-O-R-T, insert rapport like this. So that means you're a connector, a maven. A maven means you can connect with anyone in the world. It means you download content and then you can disseminate it. Aaron Knight's on today's Facebook Live. Aaron has a Facebook... Aaron has a Clubhouse Live on Sunday night that I highly endorse. Aaron, go ahead and post that Clubhouse Live. Matt Smith, post post um, post your group. Scott Lucas, if you can, post our group for us. Post our sobriety consciousness. Wojo, my brother. Wojo said, miss you, John. Wojo is another exceptional connector. Wojo, love you, my brother. Uh, congratulations on your accomplishments. Scott, if you can, post Clubhouse Live, Sobriety Consciousness. If not, I completely understand. But this is endorsement day, baby, endorsement. If you own a business and you wanna endorse yourself, do it right here on my Facebook Live. Heather, endorse yourself. I mean, you deserve, Heather's a health coach, a, a top tier one. Heather's a top tier, Josh, go ahead and endorse yourself. Josh Morin is one of the best clients I've ever coached in my career. Matt Smith, God, Matt Smith, and there's, Josh, I mean, I mean, a lot of you. Heather, it's been my honor to coach many of you. Malcolm Stewart, so good to see all of you this afternoon. So once again, you have to. It, it's going to be your responsibility to endorse yourself and be comfortable doing it. You're, that's not selfish. You're not coming from ego. You're coming from marketing. Be able to market yourself. Wojo has lots of accomplishments. Had a major breakthrough at my engineering consulting business today. Thank you, Scott Lucas, for endorsing us. Aaron, Aaron has sound meditation, breath, gratitude. I ask, I was asking Aaron this question today. Aaron, I was asking Aaron about downloading, about how he's able to download content. Aaron is very, very connected to the universe, as many of you are. Aaron is able to download content on command. So is Josh Moore, and many of you are. For those of you who do not know Lisa Bazanza, she she connects with the Fladians, if you know what that means. She's very, very skilled and talented. She's able to download content and then disseminate it. And those of you who've seen me speak, Scott, you've seen me speak a few times. Scott, one of the most touching moments of that life is of my life is that picture with you and me in New York. And Diane Hunt is on today's Facebook Live. Diane was the host of that event. Diane, thank you for being a, an exceptional woman. I it is so on Diane's on, on Facebook Live here today. Diane hosted me at least ten times. At least ten times. I've dined with her multiple times since 2014. She referred me easy a hundred clients. I mean, that's what you're looking for. People who refer you business, that is organic. That's organic marketing. It means you're not paying for the ad cost or the ad leads, you've earned that through your relationships and that's connecting on command. So relationship marketing, 
That comes from service and value. The people who refer you business, it's because they feel you. They feel the love. They feel the pain. They feel the experience. They feel you're, that you're genuine. You're authentic. They endorse you. Those are the best leads you can possibly have are from the people who endorse you. I had a client yesterday refer me two leads yesterday. I mean, that's, that's what you're looking for, people who offer you endorsements from task well done. And the, the more, the, so in, as you evolve into this, then it becomes connecting mastery. I've hosted many, many Facebook Lives, I've done live events where I covered connecting mastery. It means you can masterful at starting the conversation, opening the conversation, keeping the conversation moving in a very relaxed energy, and then asking the questions in a sequence about the outcome. And if you're dating, mating, looking for teammates, soulmates, vendors, contractors, this is one of the most this is one of the most important skills that you master over a long career. My name is Jeffrey Combs. I am the president and founder of Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. I am going to go do a prospecting call. You have an outstanding afternoon. I'll be back here for two for Tuesday tonight at 9 p.m. Pacific. 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Diane Hunt, good to see you out there, and I was edifying you. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Character and reputation. Thank you, Josh. That is great, great content. Imran, have a great, so good to see you, Imran. Imran Clark, top-tier real estate coach and investor. Look him up. See you, Henry. Have a great afternoon, everyone.